Hey guys, it's a rather frustrated mouthful here once again. Uh, for I did promise you an update on the double BF character, which is Blade Flurry and Blade Fall with Cast While Channeling. And I wanted to show you all kinds of endgame for that character uh, in terms of all the last bosses Uber at Series, Shaper, some Guardians. And um, it just could not happen because the stream file apparently is corrupt or some shit, cannot be saved. I tried lots of things to fix it, to remedy it. So best thing I can do is just kind of watch the stream file with you and um, go over some of the fights and uh, just record over it with OBS like I'm doing right now and just going to go over it real quick. So let's get started, I guess. Um, to start with, Uberit series runs, I did a lot of these on this character. They were pretty fucking smooth. I probably ran something like 20 or 30 of them and did them for viewers as well. The trash was really smooth and so were the boss fights. So this is currently what the playstyle kind of looks like. You dive in, you throw some blade flurries around, your um, blade fall is going to be doing quite a lot of the damage and um, with a totem goes a long way too. As does the um, Blasphemy Temp Chains, it makes everything a lot slower and definitely helps out in the defenses category. And of course, we're CI, so it's all pretty damn comfortable. Um, this will be the Vile Kill, it's rather smooth. All of these um, Uber Tsuri runs I was doing were just about deathless. I did level like two times, I think, maybe even three times. Um, off of just pure Uber Utsiri runs, and a lot of them were deathless, they're all pretty smooth. The DPS is, you know, it's good once you get Wither Totem scaling and going, so make sure you're always dropping your Wither Totems for these bosses, as you can see the Wither is a huge impact when you get it going. Um, Val's almost never a problem, even if things go completely wrong, you can outleach whatever they're doing, and uh, CI doesn't really give a fuck. The trio will find, potentially, any second now. Oh, they're dead. Oh, he's dead again. Oh, still dead. Alright, so basically, you know, drop a Wither Totem, dive in, one-shot the fucking um, titty bitch, and then drop a Wither Totem. As you can see, the scaling of the Wither Totem there is insane for these boss kills, and they're rather slow thanks to the temp chains. And um, yeah, these are never really a threat, especially with a Vul Discipline built up at the start of the fight. Gives you that extra five seconds of buffer just to kill the... Um, first guy before anything serious happens. As far as Uber Siri goes herself, uh, throw down a Val Lightning Trap, get your Wither Totem scaling, charge up six stacks of Blade Flurry, and then unleash and keep going with your Blade Fall. Uh, besides that, you do probably want a Bleed Immune Flask, which is um, going to just avoid the spears, and stand fairly next to her so that the Temp Chains is always going to be doing its work. But as you can see, um, it's rather smooth, things die really quick, and uh, yeah, fairly reliable. I was not dying often here at all, if ever. Uh, I don't know if I have a chance of showing you the last little bit. Bam. So yeah, you stack up your Wither, all you need is then a couple of Blade Falls and it becomes insane damage. Get a Fat Valax in return. Next up, i uh, got a Phoenix fight here. Now this one is pretty smooth as well, and for the most part, um, you can play it as offensively or defensively as you want. Dodge his first few attacks, have your Wither Totem down, throw your trap down, and then you can start burning him down with a lot of damage. Now the problem is the Phoenixes spawn all over the room, and they're going to start shooting you, and you're not really killing them because you're focusing on the Phoenix, so then you have to start moving, and that's when things get tricky because you're using Conk Effect, of course, for the huge damage scaling, and then it's harder to to kill phoenixes and clean them up while also doing damage to him and it all gets a bit clusterfucky but the damage is really good and you can just take it sort of easy um, zone in and out you know reset your flasks as you can see here uh, then zone back in you know wait for a few of the attacks to go off clean up the phoenixes throw another trap drop some wither totems and uh, should be okay. Now it might be kind of tempting to use increased area on this fight just so, to, so you can take care of phoenixes a bit better. It's really not that um, beneficial because your damage does go a lot worse without Conk Effect. Conf Conk Effect scales your Blade Flurry, Blade Fall, and Poison so insanely that it's almost too detrimental to not use it even if it's easier to kill phoenixes with the increased area. So this fight is generally pretty smooth and uh, fairly comfortable, but this character doesn't particularly excel at boss fights anyway, except for maybe mostly Uber at Ziri. Um, this here is a Minotaur fight and uh, with the right mods and the right way it goes, uh, it can be insanely easy and some of the best damage I've ever seen on Minotaur, or close to anyway. 
Once again, the wither scaling with the uh, Vile Lightning Trap, and then if you get a good few seconds of standing still and chaining your Blade Fall, which is doing most of the damage, then uh, you do end up steamrolling him. And that brings us to Shaper, because both the Chimera and Hydra fights, while I can show you them, they're pretty fucking boring and long since um, poison immunity exists, and the fights just take, or I think the Hydra fight took me like five minutes, and the Chimera fight takes uh, not too long. His phases do go pretty quick, and the add phases are still fairly smooth, but it's a boring fight, so I'll just jump straight into a Shaper for you. Um, I've done two Shaper runs on this character, and they're both relatively smooth, but uh, the damage isn't as incredible as I was hoping it would be. It's just adequate, and it does require a good chunk of standing still and channeling time to actually um, pull off the good DPS. So you'll only get a few like decent DPS phases uh, against Shaper every now and again, because he's always doing some sort of phase or whatever, uh, like right now. So make sure you're getting your Wither Totem down, it's stacking up on him as soon as you have um, a good opportunity to attack him. If the Wither's been st uh, scaled quite substantially, then you will do a lot of damage to him. Which isn't there, because there's another phase. So, adds not too much of a problem. Once again, Wither Totem down, um, use a Vile Lightning Trap if you need for the um, DPS here. Uh, I sometimes felt like I definitely needed a Vile Lightning Trap, but sometimes I felt like I didn't need it and it was just fine. Uh, that's up to you guys. Use your own discretion. So you try and place a Wither Totem away from his attacks and then get some good, fat, chunky DPS in and save your flasks for the really big DPS opportunities where you get a chance to just about one-shot him. Um, I'll just wait through this phase again. This should be a decent DPS phase over here. He's finally going to stand still for a second. Um, with his scaling quite substantially, flasks go off, you get a lot of channeling time, and he'll die rather quick. And that's how Shaper should ideally go in a perfect scenario with this type of character. You can, of course, get more energy shield uh, or scale a bit more damage if you need. Uh, long story short, Shaper dies a lot. Uber Siri dies a lot. The Poison Immune Guardians are pretty shit for us, and uh, that's just not anything you can do about as a poison based character but it lets you farm Uberitsiri very easily while um, being pretty crap against those sorts of guardians. Um, lastly I will show you a Chayula run so it's not too bad um, DPS is decent enough against it got through the breach okay uh, nothing there hurts too much since we are CI and the DPS was good enough to get through it and Chayula herself I expected to be kinda rough but uh well, I don't know. The DPS is okay, and we're CI. We have Vile Pact. We have Leech from its series flask. So it's apparently really quite easy. In any case, um, I'll give you an update about the character in the other day when I updated or tried to make this video. So it's a bit out of sync, and I may talk about stuff that I've already talked about. But this is what I recorded just um, the other day about this character, giving you updates. And I will unfortunately say there's a Chayola run incoming, but there isn't. This was the run. So very, thank you very much for watching, and see you guys next time. There was just a few things I wanted to go over that I didn't cover in previous videos or that may have changed a bit throughout the um, process. Uh, we hit level 92, it's a Pathfinder. Most of these, oh, the last couple of levels I got through Uber at Siri runs because they were fairly deathless and consistent and smooth, I ended up doing quite a lot for viewers as well. Uh, my accuracy on Blade Flurry is 83%. It's not that important since it's not that much of a dam of our damage, but I'd say go for at least 85 or 80%. I mean, shooting for about 85, any more than that, it's not too necessary, I wouldn't say. And uh, that's why I'm using an Ice Golem for the accuracy that it provides. Now, um, the skin of the Loyal I wanted to go over real quick. It's kind of just a budget option. So I bought this when it was one Exalt and it's got locked in colors, three greens, three blues. Now, only really buy it if it's going to be from like 1 to 2x. Any more than that, it's just not worth buying because it's supposed to be a budget item to get you an easy 6-link before, fancy that, um, before you can get a real chest. Because this thing right here only gives me about 2,000 ES right now, and it's based off of how good the rest of your gear is. So even with what I'm currently wearing, which is quite good overall, um, it gives me about 2,000 energy shield, so it's not that great. An 830 Val Regalia, which is pretty hard to get, would give um, an extra 2,000. 
So a real chest gives you 4,000, this chest gives you 2,000, and that's with a good everything else as well. So even at this stage, it looks like a 400 energy shield six link, which should be damn near free, or you know, like 30 cows or some shit, um, would give you the same as a skin of the loyal, you just wouldn't get the plus one anymore. Now if you know what skin of the loyal does, it essentially gives you 100% increased energy shield, the same as what passives would. So it's like a passive that just gives you 100% increased energy shield. And uh, it's based off of all the rest of your gear, so it depends on how good your gear is. For the most part, I was using this shield here, which does 320 energy shield, and that's what I've been running almost the entire time, up to about 91, maybe 92, and that got me to um, everything. So I was running about 9k energy shield most of the time, and the reason I didn't upgrade to this or this pretty much ever was because it's just too much. Um, I personally don't think I need any more than 9k, especially with a Blasphemy Temp Chains, which is very strong. Uh, my damage, uh, the leech I was getting from a Series Flask paired with Vile Pact, overall it was just already strong enough that going for like 13k energy shield, just it just seems like a stupid amount of overkill and it makes the game more boring for me. So you do what you feel like you have to. If you want more energy shield, you easily can get a lot more. Um, for my character, I was mostly running with 9.5k and only started using this shield in the last um, few hours of playing, just for smoother Uber Siri runs um, to try and farm. Now, I was also most, for most of the clips you saw, I was running level 19 added chaos, level 19 bladefall. I only just leveled them up and tried to corrupt them, didn't hit any 21s. I did finally hit a 21 on added chaos, but I didn't use it in any of the clips. It is, for reference, quite a large damage upgrade, as I'll show you here. The bladefall currently with conch effect does 8900 average and uh, 4500 top end chaos. This way it does 4,900 top end and 9,300 average. So that's a substantial increase of you know, four or 500 extra chaos damage on the blade fall, which is quite nice for an extra level. Um, likewise with blade flurry, 2,200 average and 2,400 top end on the chaos. It goes all the way up to 2,600 or 2,660, 260 average damage gained there on the top end and 2,380, so. 180 average up there. It's pretty fucking good to get a plus one added chaos, but you know, not terribly important. Now, the Scourge is pretty much locked in as the best possible weapon for this build, but you can go something like this guy with a Crown of Eyes. It's just that the Scourge does everything without needing a Crown of Eyes, and that's why we use it. As well as that, it opens up your possibilities of getting different jewels like minion damage increase, which is just a flat 15% increase to damage, which also applies to your poison, and lets you get a couple of extra good passives, which is 15 damage here, 15 there, and then lets you grab this for one point, which only affects your blade fall. So that's more or less all I wanted to say. I'll go over the gems real quick again. Blade Flurry into Cast While Channeling into Blade Fall and then added Chaos. Your next one is Increased Area and Conk Effect, depending on the boss fight. And then lastly, Void Manipulation. If you're gonna play this build, you probably do want a six link. Without a six link and no Void Manipulation, the Chaos damage and the Poison damage is just a little weaker and a little less impressive. So I'd say if you can't get a six link at all, you probably shouldn't play this. And one other thing I want to mention is Sin's Rebirth is quite insane because it does scale with Pathfinder and with um, Alchemist. Uh, don't ask me why but increased flask effect does affect the unholy might so you can see here unholy might gives me let's just say over here um, 8600 average damage with unholy might 8683 and if i take out one of these passives and then press it again 8300 so that's just popping unholy might so it does increase your unholy might extra chaos that it gives you i don't know why it does because it just plain says Unholy Might, and it should work similar to how it gives you Onslaught here, I figured, um, which is just Onslaught or Unholy Might, and thus it cannot be scaled by percentages. But instead, Unholy Might is 30% additional chaos damage based off of Fizz, and that does get scaled by percentages. 
So an extra 50% from these and Pathfinder mean it goes up to something like 45%. And that is pretty substantial additional amount of chaos, making Sin's Rebirth very nice indeed. Same with the Series Flask goes up with your um, Flask nodes, and that's why Pathfinder's a pretty good choice. It also saves you on having to get poison anywhere else in your build, thanks to this. The only downside being you do have to always have a Flask up to poison. We also do grab Master Alchemist, which is good for breaches and... Let's use a Vinktars. I personally don't run a Vinktars, I'm just running a Silver Flask instead, and running Vile Lightning Trap whenever I need that additional K um, shock. But um, you can definitely fit a Vinktars into this build if you want to just farm faster and easier. In any case, that is the character. I think it's probably worth playing over a plain Blade Flurry Assassin. If you have not um, yet fucked around with Blade Flurry, this could be your option. Uh, if you've already played Blade Flurry plenty, then it's more or less another Blade Flurry character. It just feels a little different. So I'll leave you with the Chayula run. It's my third one ever, and it went pretty smooth because CI. So thank you very much for watching, and see you guys next time.